Hey, hope everyone had an amazing holiday. Today, I decided to make a character build video. A Templar tank with support healing capabilities. I call it the Paladin. Here, I've overlaid some Banished Cells 2 gameplay in the background to showcase how great this build is. We managed to kill the final boss with no deaths, which is something not particularly easy to do. This, coupled by the fact that most people in this group, we didn't have the highest damage and we weren't very experienced with this dungeon. So in my opinion, I think that makes it a lot more impressive. Anyways, this build is great for people who are lazy and like to keep things simple. I personally only use this build with a sword and board and nothing else. You have great sustainability in the health department, but can also assist the healer in extenuating circumstances where they need help with healing. In the description, I've put timestamps for this video, so it's easy for you to navigate where you would like to watch and when. At the end of the video, I'll show gameplay of where I literally stand in the middle of strong enemies and do absolutely nothing, and you'll see it survive the whole time. Mahalo so much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. Let's get started. As for the class, it's obvious we're going Templar. Now with the race, I believe there are three viable options, the Nord, Imperial, and Argonian. If you prefer a character with higher physical and spell resistances, health, and cold immunity, I would go with the Nord. If you want a character that has great overall health and stamina, along with great health and stamina recovery, I would go with the Imperial. If you want a character that has increased healing capabilities, coupled with a unique skill that allows you to restore extra health, stamina, and magicka when you use a potion, I would go with Argonian. All in all, I believe that any of these three choices are good choices. I personally use the Nord because I prefer a tankier gameplay. As per my attributes, I maxed out my health, but don't be afraid to commit some points in magicka if you want. You won't need stamina because your heavy attacks will restore a lot of your stamina. I use the Atronach as my Mundus Stone, and uh, Bewitched Sugar Skulls as my main food. As for the gear, you will be using two five-piece dungeon sets and a monster set, the Leeching Plate set which can be found in the Imperial City Prison, and the Brands of the Imperium from the White Gold Tower. The two-piece Lord Warden monster set can also be found in the Imperial City Prison like the Leeching Plate set, however, you will need to complete the dungeon on Veteran to obtain this. And these sets are absolutely amazing for self-healing and team damage mitigation. The Leeching Plate set will basically make you invincible. You will spawn these clouds of poison underneath the enemy's feet, and every time that poison cloud hits an enemy, you'll heal for a certain amount. The more enemies there are, the more you heal. For example, if there are 5 enemies standing by the poison clouds, you'll heal for 5k per second which is far greater than any healer could heal you per second with respect to heal over time spells. Now the brand of the Imperium set is a very underused set that I haven't seen much of, but it is absolutely amazing for a free damage shield proc every 15 seconds. Basically, anytime you get damaged, you have a 10% chance to have a large damage shield to activate on you and your teammates within a certain vicinity which is great for extra survivability. And finally, we have the Lord Warden Monster Set, which permacasts a dark purplish shadow orb every 10 seconds that increases you and your team's physical and spell resistances. It's also nice because on top of the passive synergy that it offers, it gives you a permanent 3k physical and spell resistance. As for the skills, we got Bone Surge from the Undaunted skill line, we have Extended Ritual from the Restoring Light skill line. We have Repentance from the Restoring Light skill line as well. Restoring Focus also from the Restoring Light skill line. Ransack from the One Hand and Shield skill line. And finally, Remembrance also from the Restoring Light skill line. Now later on, I'm going to show you how to use these combos and explain why I have these spells slotted on my main bar. Now that we've finished talking about our main active skills, let's move on to the passive skills. So as you can see from the character class skill lines, 
I've maxed out everything on the Adric Spear passives, two out of two for every single one. The skill line is essential for increasing your overall damage as well as giving you extra damage mitigation from enemies. In the bottom middle, you can see I've only put one point in the passive skill Restoring Spirit for Dawn's Wrath and that is because the final passive gives you a 5% reduction cost on all abilities. And the final character specific skill line for the Templar, you got Restoring Light which is your main healing skill tree and as you can see I've maxed out every passive on that tree and that's because you want to increase your healing potential from the healing spells you've slotted as well as increase the speed in which you resurrect your teammates. As for the other passives, it's pretty self-explanatory. You max out one hand and shield to maximize your blocking potential as well as decreasing the cost it takes for you to block. The heavy armor skill line is maxed to increase your health recovery and give you extra damage mitigation. The Undaunted skill line is maxed out for increased overall resources in your health, magicka, and stamina. And finally, your racial skill line, whatever it may be, is maxed out to give you the benefits of whatever race you selected. So here I'm going to show you how to use the combinations for this tank. It's very, very simple. So before you head into a battle or an encounter, you want to put down your Restoring Focus to give you your higher physical and spell resistances, and you want to set down your Extended Ritual for extra healing. Now these are amazing because they last 24 seconds, or a little over 20 seconds each, which is great because you don't always have to worry about casting it all the time and then finding that your resources are running low. So once you do that, I contemplate whether or not to cast the Bone Surge. Now the Bone Surge is just your shield. Um, I typically will cast it if uh, I'm in a large group in a trial or a dungeon and they need some extra damage mitigation. Uh, but if not, once you've casted your Restoring Focus and your Extended Ritual, I would use my Ransack to start aggroing enemies. And you basically just rinse and repeat. You really just have to be wary of whether or not to set your Bone Surge and also to have a good uptime for your Restoring Focus and your Extended Ritual. Now, Repentance is slotted for its passive ability to increase your recovery, but it's also there so when enemies die, you can provide some extra support healing because it desecrates the souls of enemies and it restores about 3,000 health and stamina for every enemy that you desecrate or for every soul that you desecrate. So be wary of that. Don't overuse it if you don't need it, but you know if you if you see your healers being overwhelmed, definitely cast it. And now I'm just showcasing some gameplay where I walk into some world bosses and stand, and I'm not even casting anything here. And as you can see, my Legion plate set procs and starts healing me right away. And on top of that, every 15 seconds, I get a damage shield for my Brands of the Imperium set. And as you can see from that dark purplish orb that casts, that gives me extra resistances. So I'm basically invisible, or <laughs> not invisible, invincible at this point. Like I can't even be taken down. Like you got here, I got the Canarin boss, and then I'll show later what the Griffin boss is. Like it's just, it's really difficult to take this character down. So I thought I'd, it'd be neat for me to share this build with everyone. Uh, thank you so much for watching again. I really do appreciate uh, all the support that I'm getting. You know, the past few days I've gotten three, four subs, and I know that's kind of pathetic and something stupid to be excited about, but I actually do appreciate it. So if you found this video helpful, uh, please like and subscribe. And, uh, you know, leave in the comments on what you would like to see next. Or if you have any criticisms or anything, you can post that too. And just let me know. Hey, much appreciated. Eh? Take it easy.